Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Kerwin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 135, Do the Math in the Text. All right, this is a crazy question sent in from YouTube. Uh, we actually have text here and we want to generate the uh, the result of that. So 1 times 3.15 will be 3.15, but 2 times 3.15 uh, you know, so oh, this is going to be a disaster because you have a lot of things you have to ignore, like the units here, and even being able to do one times five plus two times three point one five, and have all of that calculate like this over here. All right, so my solution is going to be a VBA macro. Of course, we're going to select the cells that we want to convert. Make sure the cells to the right are completely empty. We'll do Alt F eleven, insert a module. I just created a quick little module here called foo for each cell in selection. We're going to start with a new variable called new formula and that's going to be equal to an equal sign. We're going to take the text from cell.value. We're going to loop for each character from one to the length of my text. Uh, extract that character using the mid function just like in uh, Excel we would use the mid function and then we're going to see what the character is. If it's a digit 0 through 9, a plus, a minus, a divide, or a period, then we're going to append that character onto the end of new formula. If it's an X, which they mean to be multiplication, then we're going to append an asterisk and we'll just go through each character, each character, each character, see if it's an M or a V or uh, any of those other letters, it's just going to ignore it, it's not going to do anything. So what we're going to end up with right before we write this formula back to the spreadsheet, we're going to end up with just the, uh, just the math. Uh, symbols. So here, let's try it. We'll run down to this point. I'm going to hover over new formula. Let's see, we get equals one times 3.15. I'm going to put that in the cell one column to the right of the cell. All right, we can get rid of that breakpoint now. We'll let the whole thing run. And when we switch back to Excel, you'll see that we have not just the answer, but we also have the real math behind the answer up in the formula bar. There you go. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, you got to love that VBA. It was quick and easy and even left the formula with the math, uh, numbers, and the operators. Oh, man, this is a pretty wild one, and I actually do not know how to do it in a, a single formula. I'm going to take it in two steps. The first thing is I want to transform these, get rid of any of those letters, uh, change the x to an asterisk. So I'm going to use the substitute function. Now we'll take this text and the first thing we'll do, we will remove the old text MVA and the new text will be a null text string double quote double quote. That's the syntax for show nothing. So ready? Control enter and there we got rid of the MVA. With the column highlighted in the active cell, I'll hit F2. And now, hey, I'm going to use a second substitute. It will take that as the text. I'm going to find, in double quotes, the X and put in its place, substituting in an asterisk. Control-Enter to populate that edited formula into the column. Now, that's text. And here again, I have speak cells on Enter. But that's text, right? What are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to jump way back in history. We're going to look at an Excel for macro function. Now, we can use a defined name. And if you know what those functions are from way back in history, you can just use them in a defined name. But he, and actually, you could search the Excel um, It's Fun channel for Excel for macro function. I have a few videos on these. But you know, I don't use them very often, and I, I always forget. So there's a great trick. Now, before we see this trick uh, that will help us with Excel for macro functions, what's the keyboard shortcut for inserting a new sheet? It's Shift F11. So Shift F11, there's a new sheet. But what do I do? I usually, I'm such a bad typer, I accidentally hit Control F11. And what does Control F11 do? For those of you who have done this by mistake, you're like, what's this macro sheet? Well, it's not a normal sheet. Shift F11 gave us a normal sheet. Control F11 gives us a macro sheet. But here's the thing. We can test Excel for macro functions on a macro sheet, and they'll actually work. So I'm going to come over here, copy, come over, and how about uh, pay special values? And let's try it. There's a macro for function called evaluate. Open parentheses. And 
when I control enter, oh, wait a second, maybe it's not a real function. No, but wait a second, because it was all capitalized, you know it is. And here's the thing about macro sheets. When you insert them, they get inserted in audit mode. So if you go up to formulas, show formulas, you can toggle out, or there's a, a toggle. It's control tilde. Now, lots of us use control tilde because it works on regular sheets. We could see the result of the formulas or the number formatting. When we control tilde, it shows us the formulas and the unformatted number. So that's a toggle. You can go back and forth. And sure enough, evaluate is working. All right, let's go back. Because what we want to do is use a define name and create a universal relative cell reference. And here's how it works. If our define name is always going to look to the left and do something on that cell, you have to build your define name with an actual cell selected. And we're then going to click there, and it will be a universal uh, relative cell reference. So I'm going to use the keyboard Control F3 to open up names. new. I'm going to call this uh, Evaluate, actually just the text Evaluate. And then I'm going to come down here. Now, here's the thing. You have to put B12. Now, watch what happens when I click. It puts in a sheet name, an explanation point. That explanation point is the syntax for sheet reference, and then an absolute cell reference. But that's not what we want. You want to just put a single explanation point, and then it is B12. So this cell is selected, C12, and I want to type out B12. And that's how we create a universal relative cell reference. That means wherever we put this define name evaluate, it will always look to the left and try and evaluate it. So I click OK, click Close, and let's try it equals evaluate. And you can see down here, there it is. And it's just a define name, Control Enter, and copy it down. You've got to be kidding me. Look at that. If we were to uh, you know, come over here and do 2 caret 3 times minus 2, and that's text, right? Come over here and use our evaluate. And no problem. It will calculate the answer. All right. <laughs> we'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, Mike, that was awesome. Excel 4 macros. I never knew the Control F11. What a great trick. I'm coming out to your channel right now, clicking this search and do Excel 4 macro, and we'll see what else is out there. I got to watch these to see what else we can do with these amazing macros. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.